it's starting to record. Okay. Um, so we defined attics. I go back one slide uh, if it ever moves. Aha. Uh, and move you up a little bit. Uh, and this was a general uh, definition that could be a working definition for us. And we're making it business attic. Uh, it's basically the same definition. It says it's moral principles, um, but often these moral principles are not exactly laws or regulations. Regulations are, are coming from some regulatory authority. For example, um, someone gives us permission to bring this vaccine to the market. That would be a regulatory authority. Um, and we have to uh, follow the regulations that they set or someone comes to our restaurant and tells us that uh, these uh, refrigerators that we have have to be a stainless steel etc or some regulations that the land has laws are of course uh, things that you are familiar with and it doesn't need a definition here um, for example someone who has done murder would be in trouble with police um, so these laws and regulations guide uh, conduct of trade and business. How do we do business and um, how we trade with each other? Um, and this definition tries to say that moral is beside the laws and regulations. Um, so it tries to say it has to do with fair dealing. Um, something that we won't get in trouble under the law uh, but it's not fair to do. For example, um, you sold something on eBay um, and it was defective and the person returned it and now they want their money back. Um, now, um, you claim that you have not received this item back. Um, under the law, if the person had sent it to the uh, post office uh, with um, something that has a receipt and requires a signature from you, uh, then they can go to a court and make a claim that here is your signature, that you actually, uh, as a business, received this defective item that was shipped back, and I want my money, and that's under the law, um, uh, and uh, the judge may rule that you get your money. But uh, business ethics says, okay, uh, um, the customer doesn't have a signed receipt, but I received the defective product back. Now I say I didn't get it back. Um, just these words uh, would save me 100 euros, I don't have to pay it. Um, so that example tells us the difference between moral principles, you're lying for profit for gain for 100 euros where the customer had actually mailed it, I have actually received it, but I don't pay the money and save 100 euros. But under the law, they can't get me. So this definition tries to make a distinction that certain things are not quite illegal, but they're not fair. And of course, those things you and I know uh, as a group. Uh, but um, we lump them under ethics. What you and I see as fair or unfair has a social learned um, background coming from the family, coming from the religion, that we believe in um, and culture. Therefore, it's not exactly universal. Um, so certain things uh, um, are different in different cultures and in different religions. And we don't have this universal ethics um, that goes to every culture. Therefore, sometimes, uh, we talk about uh, Christian ethics or Protestant working ethics. We try to make it more specific to a religion. 
um, cultural and religious background of ethics, cultural con consensus. That means a general agreement that we reach uh, within a group uh, that is uh, that has things in common, artifacts in common makes us a culture, language in common often makes us a culture, um, a country in common makes us a culture. Um, quite a few things goes in definition of a culture, but perhaps language is the most central item. Of course, religion is part of it too. Religious and philosophical beliefs often guide what is right or wrong. Um, you see certain words here are um, in red. I hope you can see it in uh, these slides that I'm sharing. And certainly uh, when you download these slides, you, could, you should see them. Um, so um, I would um, hang my hat on these nails. Uh, in other words, when I want to discuss this discussion, especially um, uh, if I want to reproduce this discussion, especially in an exam situation, um, um, this word right and wrong and this word consensus sort of makes the definition. Um, fair makes the definition. So um, culture is things that we all agree as a, cult, um, as a group. Um, and uh, this uh, ethics is tied to it. And ethics about, is about fair and fairness. It has a religious background of it. It's about right and wrong. As soon as we talk about religion, um, then you would see the question becomes whose religion? When we talk about culture, the question becomes whose culture? So you would see that this ethic, uh, definition and uh, a standard criteria is not that easy to pin down. Uh, and here is the, the scholarly article that I brought up uh, in a discussion that a classmate and I had. This is from Lewis, 1985, defining business ethics. It says it's like nailing jello to a wall. You know, jelly jello, the, the funniest stuff that you eat with ice cream, um, and it wiggles and you can't hold it. So he says, um, uh, pick up, pick a bunch of jello and try to nail it to the wall so it expands. It's kind of an impossible, difficult task. Uh, he says, look, defining business ethics are pretty difficult too. Well, I just defined it, but he's telling me that my definition is not the only one. Uh, and there are a lot of others. Um, he published his article in Journal of Business Ethics. Um, I have a reference to it here, um, pages 377 to 383, if you're interested to look at it. It says definitions expressed in the literature and by business people. So he, he interviewed business people and looked at ethics um, and literature. Number one, um, statements, especially with Google text searches, these things have become very common to look for common statements different places. Rules, standards, or codes governing an individual are one common thing that he saw in 48 different type of definitions that he saw. Then moral principles developed in the course of a lifetime were common in 25 of these definitions of business ethics. What is right and wrong in specific situations were common in 24 of these texts that talked about definition of business ethics. Telling the truth was 23%. Um, and these are not percent, forgive me, it's a number of mentions, 23 times. Uh, telling uh, the truth is very interesting um, because that's quite cultural. In the American culture, mm, it's different from German culture. It's different from Japanese culture. It's different from Iranian cultures. Um, 
and let me explore how this telling the truth is different. Let's try with American culture. Um, I have a son who is uh, six years old, and uh, he tells me, Dad, guess how many times Trump lied? <laughs> of course, six year old, I suppose uh, he had talked to other classmates, and it always uh, makes me um, very interested that uh, so many Germans are interested in American politics. But anyways, I said, son, how many times did uh, Trump lie? He said, more than a thousand times. And so then we go back to telling the truth under American standards. Basically, we have this thing about credibility. Credibility, um, people tell you that you've got to be credible in the US. What it really means is not that uh, we won't lie, particularly politicians. It really means that people cannot prove that you have lied, that you can wiggle out of it, that it could be um, you know, like a non-stick pan that it doesn't stick to you. You can't be proven wrong. And um, part of it goes with the culture. For example, uh, if the police stops me for a speeding in U.S., which they do, <laughs> I sometimes speed, um, I would say that, uh, and they ask me, I would say, no, I didn't. Um, because you are Basically, once you admitted you're guilty and uh, you would feel uh, the full force of the law as a guilty person. Um, now, in um, Japanese culture, it's quite different. If they catch me, I would admit my guilt. Because if you don't admit it, um, then there would be huge trouble. Conviction rates in Japan is something like 99%. Um, they do not uh, torture prisoners, but uh, once one gets into trouble with law, then there is a lot of um, interrogations, um, sometime at long hours. Um, and um, basically, uh, People eventually tell the truth. And of course, when you push so much, some people who are not guilty also just admitted to get out of that game. Um, so this telling of the truth is different from different cultures. Um, when I was uh, raised uh, as an Iranian, um, the concept of being smart uh, kind of meant that you are able to out do someone else um, by being more tricky. That was defined as a smart, and that could involve, involve lying. So again, you see this concept is um, sort of like jello, different in different cultures. And of course, it has to do with how those cultures uh, have lived their lives, uh, how much democracy they have. I talked about the police situation in Japan. Uh, Japan is a country that enjoys um, quite a bit of democracy, but the situation with police is pretty much as I described. Uh, number five, the belief in social responsibility kind of comes under ethics. Uh, look that the numbers are dropping considerably, 18 mentions here, compared to 48 for rules and the standards. What is fair and above board, 16? Honesty, honesty, kind of uh, um, connected to number four, telling the truth, um, but different people use different wordings and honesty was 16. Um, so basically this tells you that definition of ethics is something we can't quite agree on. And uh, that's where the trouble starts. So what can we agree on? Let's go to art. This is a famous painting from a museum. Um, there is a boy standing there 
and um, this is an inquisition in uh, UK, United Kingdom. Uh, there was a time um, that for political reasons, uh, the Church of England was separated from the Catholic Church. Um, and here, Presbyterians are prosecuted. And one of the principles of being a Presbyterian, at least at that time, um, was to tell the truth. So they were taught that telling the truth is the most important thing. And this young boy looks like my son's age, six or seven years old, uh, is taught to tell the truth. Now here are the police, uh, 1800s, uh, maybe this is sooner, the artwork is from 1800s, I'm not so sure about um, historical events of Presbyterians, but it might be 1800s too. Um, the police had come to the house to arrest the dad for being a Presbyterian and most likely would kill her. The dad had been hidden or hid himself under that great door picture that you see, a fake room. And the group is asking um, the boy, son, do you know where your father is? He could lie and say no. His sister is crying in the back, doesn't trust him to uh, lie. Um, and the other sister is hiding behind mom. Or he could lie. This is what we call a classic ethics dilemma. Ethics dilemma is when you uh, do something ethical and you cause great harm. Another classical ethics dilemma has to do with the following story. I believe the story is made up. It's not true like this one. The story is you go on vacation with uh, your significant other, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, or someone else that you care about, and they come up with a disease. Uh, an illness, let's say uh, a snake bites, I don't know. And it requires a medicine, a potion, and it requires it relatively fast. You go to the pharmacist and there is only one in the little location island, uh, and the pharmacist says it's 10,000 euros, and you don't have 10,000 euros. The pharmacist closes the pharmacy. The ethics question is, would you climb in, break in, steal the medicine, or would you let your loved one die the day after? Again, we call that a classic uh, ethics dilemma um, because um, ethics says we should not steal, but if we don't steal, under this story, if you uh, sort of take the storylines as fixed and something you can change and argue with, uh, someone that you care deeply about will die if you don't steal. Ethics dilemma, so something you want to know. And Let me pause for questions, comments this far. Anything that interests you that you want to say more? I'll kill this sharing so you can look at me. Hatik's dilemma. Uh, has anyone heard of one? Has anyone faced an ethics dilemma? I guess they had more fortunate lives. I sort of say, hey. Uh, I'm fortunate at this time of history that I live in Germany. Yeah, because I mean, it's when somebody tells you a secret about another friend and he would profit by knowing the information. Um, so you can either keep it for yourself or you can tell it to the friend. Very good. Yeah, um, we had uh, 
uh, this one uh, one of the richest men in uh, the world. Uh, he had a girlfriend, and then the girlfriend's brother sold some information about. Uh, you know, he was married and had a girlfriend, and then the girlfriend's brother sold the information to the tabloids for personal profit. And does that ring a bell, or or? Eh, I'm not good at telling a story, right? <laughs> Anyone else who wants to talk about this? Have we had situations where we where find the right to lie? Um, you know, a guy with the uh, delivery guy. May I? Go ahead, please. I mean, if no one's going to be hurt with the lie, I mean, like when you're in, in the office and your customer calls, like, why is this partner coming to me? And you say, like, oh, and you forgot me to say, oh, sorry, our apprentice made a mistake. I mean, nobody's going to hurt by that, for example. Kind of. Yeah, no, that's a good example. Um, we have the kind of cultural example again here. Um, in the US, uh, you know, your spouse looks at you and says, honey, am I fat? Or we all say, no, you're not. You're very thin. <laughs> no, in Germany, sometimes it's different. <laughs> so, because you're more honest, right? Again, it's a cultural thing, right? Mm. But that, that talks about white lies, lies that would hurt other people's feelings. You know, should we go to someone and tell in their face that I hate you when we really hate them? <laughs> you know, some people do that. Well, maybe when we are teenagers or, uh, you know, very young, uh, and then life is more brutal. When we are older, we sort of are more diplomatic. You know, we don't have to disclose that. We don't like that person, right? But why talk about it? And of course, uh, sometimes you can't go ahead. Sorry. Another example would be uh, a typical dilemma that is often used is the decision of a pilot whether to crash into the into a stadium with a lot of people or to crash the plane. And um, yeah, with the uh, People sitting in the plane down to earth. We all now, the, now our examples are getting more dramatic. You know, someone wants to commit suicide and then wants to kill a lot of people together with it. This killing uh, have been very much at the center of our ethics. I, well, I guess one of the Ten Commandments under the Christianity is, uh, "Thou shalt not kill." Um, when you um, study monkeys, um, often they group together and kill, violently kill a leader, and another leader takes place of that leader. So you need a group and you need someone to challenge the leader, and you sort of can take it from the monkeys and bring it to us as humans when politically it's done that way over the history. Um, and then a slowly we move to democracies. But some of these behaviors um, have been with us historically and slowly we are changing them. Anyone else who wants to comment this one? Okay, let's go back to sharing. One question on that. Go ahead, please. When does the uh, class end, actually? <laughs> Always tell me. I, I have a good time teaching you guys. We are two minutes of your time here, right? Right? Sometimes I forget to. It yes. um, okay. ends at 6.15, right? Yes. So uh, see you guys next time. And same channel. We'll continue. All right.
See you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 B